All right, so here we go. We got a semi semi quick one here. This one's uh, custom tailored for John G. This is for your car scriber version 2.0. Better, bigger, badder, better. So I'm just gonna basically show you how to install it first, and then I'll give a quick overview of how to use it. It's sim you know I've already showed you once, but I'll show you what I added and stuff like that. And for everyone playing along at home, this is basically how to install a macro and just you know if you're watching along so what you're going to do is i'm going to give you a thumb drive um it only has so many viruses on it i'm just kidding it's brand new so you're just going to stick it in there um and find the john g scribes folder on the hard on the little thumb drive i gave you so you're going to have these three files you don't have to worry about the cdr i just put that in there this is the cdr that i created the icon with so whatever if you want to change your icon figure out how to do it you can make your own icon Anyway, so all you're worried about is the GSM or the GMS, which is the macro file. This is, you're gonna use this to install, you know, in the, in the back end of Corel. And then this is the icon um, that I showed you. You're gonna go ahead and get this installed up here in what they call the status bar. You can see where all my icons are. And then you're gonna use that to launch your macro. So, so now that we have this open, what I like to do is I like to right click so you're going to go to your C drive because we got to we got to go into Corel. What I like to do is right click and do another window. So open this in a new window. That way it keeps your this folder. You know this one's open, and then you're you're gonna you're gonna hunt down what you need on this one. So you're gonna go to your C drive, and then you're gonna go to users. Now you want to make sure that your 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 hidden folders are visible. Um, you want to see the ghosty ones because once you go to users and you pick the user that your Corel is installed in, and then you want app data, which is normally hidden. So you have to turn this on, you see it's ghosted. So you go to app data, then you go to roaming. This is a long track. And then you go to Corel, and then you choose which one. Now, if you only have one, but Corel will create a new folder, as you can see. Um, so we're in 2021, that's what I'm using. I think that's what you're using. So you're gonna open that. Then you're gonna to go to draw. So you can see this is quite a trick. Now, when you get here, depending on if you've installed or if, or because Corel does come with some pre-installed, um, they give you a couple of macros, but the GMS folder sometimes might not be there. What you want is this GMS folder. If the GMS folder is not there, you can just go up here and click new and just add the folder, but make sure you name it three letters, capitals, GMS. Then this is where you're gonna dump your GMS folder or file. You can see where John G. Scribers is there. This is where you'll put it in there. Yours will obviously not have all of this. This is all my stuff. So you'll just copy paste the .gms here, drag and drop it into your GMS folder, and you're good to go. Now, if you want, you can dump the ICO in there, and if you want to, you can dump the CDR in there as well, or just keep it on your, your thumb drive, because once you reference the icon to here, the system will remember it, but if you ever have to like reinstall or anything like that, you just wanna know where that little icon is. That's all. Um, or you'll have to make your own or, you know, whatever. So um, once you've drag and dropped that file into Corel, um, Corel should be closed. It's helpful. Then you're going to fire up Corel. Okay, so now here we are. We're, we fired up Corel. So now what you're going to do is go to your Windows, this the, up here at the top, the top left, all right, in the menu bar here. You're going to go to Window, and you're going to go to Dockers, not the Pants. You're gonna to go to the Docker and it's gonna pop open the scripts Docker, okay? So, and I know we're dealing with macros, but for some reason in Corel's infinite wisdom, they decided to call it scripts because they added the ability to do JavaScripts. So don't, you know, you're not gonna see macros, you're gonna see scripts and it's gonna open this Docker. Um, chances are this Docker will actually be here, you know, next to the palette when you first open it, that's fine. You can just grab it and drag it if you want to and break it out into its own Docker. So if you know how that works, if not, fine. So yours obviously won't have all these macros, but I think it comes with a calendar wizard and color chart creator. I think those are embedded fine. You'll see global macros, but then you should see your 
John G. Scribers there. So um, now in order to launch your little widget from this point out, you could live here. You don't have to worry about the icon up here. What you would have to do though, is get this open every time, make sure this Docker's open, scroll down to your John G. Scribers and drill down. You're gonna expand and then you're gonna expand this again and you see John G. Launcher, you click that and you see this play button that is going to quote unquote play your macro, which the code says fire up his car scriber. Now, if, if for some reason my macros only always go to my second screen, which is off, off camera, but basically when you hit launch, it will go to, you know, it opens. There it is. Now, if this is how you want to do it, this is how a lot of people do their macros. All you got to do is like, you know, click here and click here and you see it hits play. It'll create calendar, you know, whatever you want to do. Um, but this is how I'll show you how to do it up here. That way you just push the button and go. So once you have scripts loaded in the uh, Visual Basic for applications, um, you should be you should be good to go. Now, just a quick sidebar. Sometimes, so when you're looking at this script thing, you have two. You have Visual Studio for applications. Do not get that confused. That is for the actual big boy Visual Studios app where you can write programs like big boy programs and then you're installing it into Visual Studio tools. That's that's big big time stuff. Ignore that. You want Visual Basic for Applications, VBA. I've had this happen before where when you load up Corel, actually install the program, this isn't there. And so what you need to do is then go into the apps and hit repair. Like you have to go to the uninstall in Windows and act like you're gonna uninstall Win uh, Corel 2021. But then it'll ask you, do you wanna repair? And for some reason, it doesn't load this. If Visual Basic for Applications is not there, then you're not gonna be able to see your macro. Um, like I said, it's it doesn't happen all the time, but sometimes. But um, so you look for, you know, so not Visual Studio Tools, no. Visual Basic for Applications, then you go to John G. Scribers. You can drill down, click, and hit launch, and it'll launch it. So let's let's go to the easy route now. Well, yeah, that was easy, sure. So you can either do that, keep your scripts going, do it that way, or so let's add an icon up here. So we don't need scripts. No, we don't need scripts. We can move it out of the way. I keep that open on my second screen. So. What you want to do now to add this icon. So now while you're in Corel, right, you have the top bar here is the menu bar. So it has the file, it has edit, that's the menu bar. The one below it here um, that has save and print and all this stuff, that's called the standard bar. The standard toolbar is customizable and you can add these things up here like I have. These are all my icons. So all you're going to do is get in this area, right click, and see customize. You'll see everything's, yeah, because it's visible. Now, if the status or if the standard bar isn't visible, I mean, it should be because it has all this, but for some reason, you just click this, check it, and it'll come back, you know? But if you don't see what I'm talking about as far as having the print and the save and all this up here, um, if it's not looking familiar like that, make sure standard is clicked. Once that's clicked, make sure it stays that way. Then you're gonna go to customize. So right click, customize, standard toolbar, it's third one down, right? And then you're gonna go to add new command, dot, dot, dot. Click that. Now, depending on how fast your computer is, this, this uh, is asking a lot because this right now is sort of changing the structure of Corel um, on the fly. And sometimes when you move and you know access things, depending on how fast your computer is, you think it's stuck, give it a moment. So the options thing is in three sections. Ignore this. And for now, over here is where you're gonna go browse for your icon. Ignore this. It's this list right here. Now, in order to get, now all of this is customizable. That's what's crazy. Like you can add any of these things to this bar. So if you go to this top pull down, these are all the things, I mean, super customizable if you really wanna get into it. So we're gonna come down here Ignore JS scripts, that's not what we want. I know it's confusing, even though the Docker says scripts. Um, even though this doctor, Docker says scripts, we still want macros. So we're gonna come here and we're gonna go to macros 
And what this is going to do is load. And now again, see how long it takes. It's going to load all the macros. Now, obviously I have a heck of a lot more than you do and they're alphabetical. So it shouldn't take you very long to go down and find the, the John G macro. So there it is, John G code. This is what you'll see. Now what you'll do is select it. And again, this might take like every click might take a little bit because if depending on how fast your computer is, this is there's a lot of work going on. So you're going to select it. And if it looks like it's selected and it's good to go, then you're going to go over here and you're going to browse for the ICO. Now, I've already did it once, so it's it's set. But what you're going to have to do is go to that thumb drive and then go to the John G. Scribes and find that dot ICO. That's that's what it wants as far as you know a graphic. You're going to select it and then hit open. And what it's going to do is change this. Like you can see, these are all the default icons. And now all of a sudden you have this icon. And you can see that there's a serious bug there in Corel that <laughs> the word goes away once it adds the icon. But don't worry about that. But that yeah, that's just a bug. Uh, Corel, if you're watching, there's a bug right there. Uh, I know their answer is just, we'll go to 2022. See my other macro about how you killed DXFs. So we can't. Anyway, so now that this loaded and this shows here, that's what we want. The last step, do not hit OK. The last step, which is weird, is you have to literally drag and drop this selected bar. You're going to drag and drop it up to the bar. So watch. So you grab this, hold, select and hold. And you can see where it has the add. It wants to add it. Now you can see where it will go in between any of these. I'm not going to do it because I don't want to have to delete it. But all you would do is let go and you will add a the icon to the status bar. Okay, once you've done that, then you can hit OK. And it will keep this icon will now appear up here and you're set. And that what that did is it linked that icon. It'll tell it to launch and you're good to go. So hit OK at that point. And when you're done, you should theoretically have um, a little your little icon up here. And then when you click that icon, it's going to fire it up just like it does for my stuff. Um, and then what you want to do just for maintenance purposes is you want to you want to hit save settings as default and hit that a couple times. And then also at this point, do yourself a favor. And once you have like all your dockers set and you have everything the way you like it, then go to Windows, go to Workspace and export a copy of your workspace. Um, it's always handy because what happens is sometimes if you have to reinstall Corel, then it's going to remember what you just did here. Um, otherwise, yeah, you're starting from scratch. And if you could imagine with all these icons having to upload all of those with all of that, oh, oh my goodness. So do yourself a favor every now and then when you make changes to things and you kind of edit the way you like things, save yourself a workspace. Not only that, but if you were to want to work on another computer or another station, you can literally load your workspace and then you're right back home. Everything feels comfortable. It's the way you like it, all of that. So that's just a pro tip work with workspaces, create, you know, export a, a, your workspace about every six months and kind of keep, keep that as sort of like a backup. Um, anyway, so tools, save settings as default if you like them. And the settings for that is like your nudge and your size of your lines and everything like that. So save settings as default, but also window export, make, save yourself a, a, a workspace. So that we don't have to do all this again. So now that you have your little icon up here, you'll just click it. And so what I'll do is I'm going to launch yours since I'm not going to make an icon for myself, but I'm going to launch it um, the other way. Here it is. So that's it. That's how you load it. If you have any questions, I'll help you through it. But I hope that works for you. So this is how you use it. You already kind of saw, but here's what I'm going to show you what I did different. So let's say I've got um, a 16 by 36 kind of similar to your to your uh, to the front grill setup you got there. Uh, use your imagination that it's all cool like a Impala or something. So you're going to select the shape like you did before and you're going to hit the same button, but you can see here where I gave you adjustability. So let's just keep it the same. This is what I gave you before by default. When you open this, it's going to be 24 by 1. So you're going to hit that button. There you go. Just like you saw before. But the, distance, the difference now, though, is I'm going to give you the ability to um, customize the distance apart. 
So you could set it up for eight and then make sure you select a shape. And then now they're eight inches apart on center. Um, let's say that you decide to make this a 48 inch, like you, you, somebody says, well, I want a giant grill and it's 60 wide. Well, obviously you're gonna cut yourself some long bars. So let's say you're just gonna go 50 on the, uh, and then let's say that you found that top bar is that trick stuff you found online. And let's say it's a uh, metric. So it's like a one, six, five or some weird thing. And then you actually want to do like a two by on the bottom, the why, you know, the, how high it is. And you, you want to keep them at seven. Then when you make the scribes, you got to select a shape, make the scribes. So there you go. So now we have a two inch bar and we have a 1.65 bar. That way, you know, this will be your cleat and that'll be your other one. So you can see where, you know, it's now it's totally adjustable depending on because that's what kind of made me think is you're like, well, I'm thinking about buying, I'm thinking about trying this or I'm trying this other product. Well, now you can, you know, your top bar, you can you can adjust that Y height depending on, you know, if it's really small and for some reason you want to use three quarter inch bar or something, you know, you can do that. And then it's a nice little skinny bar up top and then you can use two by on the bottom, whatever. Um, just so you know, oh, you don't want to delete that yet. So the way it works is in order to keep this on track and not erroring out, there's a lot of ways for this to error out. Um, and so the easiest way to keep it from erroring out is for it to just not do anything. So you can see where everything's empty here. Um, when you push the button and nothing happens, that just means something's wrong. Otherwise this would crash and it would crash, you know, it's, it's, it's a pain in the butt. So error handling is the biggest problem. So if there's no sizes here, then the computer would crash because it's trying to do math. When you push this button, it's trying to do math. And if there's no numbers to do math, the computer crashes. So, uh, the, so all the safeties are, if nothing's happening, then something's wrong. That's all. Otherwise, I would have to create literally hundreds of like little boxes that pop up and say, oh, you're doing this wrong. You're doing that wrong. You, did you check this? You check that. So the easiest way is I just have it park. I just have it coast to a stop if anything's wrong. So you want to make sure there's always a number here and there's always a number here. And you want to make sure that there's always a number here and there's always a number here and here. So your distance apart, eight inches. OK, so as long as all of these have a number in them and you select at least one shape. You can't select any more than one shape. So you're going to select your bumper and you're going to hit that button. As long as everything's kosher, it's going to do what it's told. Now, the other safety is that let's say you accidentally for some reason put a letter. This isn't algebra. It's not going to figure this out. So what is it going to do? It's just going to not do anything. So if you're pushing the button and nothing's happening, don't call me and get mad and start you know cursing me just look to see that maybe, or you have two decimal points. You have 5.5.8 accidentally. Nothing's going to happen. That's all. So just a little, you know, guide. But when I, when this thing pops open every time, um, I have it defaulted to what you originally had. So maybe that'll work for you. Let me know. I can have this, you know, default to whatever the bar that you decided to start using that one you found if it's easier for you to have a different number um, when this thing first pops up just let me know and i can change these defaults um, another another thing just to know is that um, i already have the offset built in so even though this says 24 by 1 um, i have it at 0.03 bigger because what we found is having that little bit of wiggle room when you're dealing with any extrusion it, it says one by one or whatever, but by the time you add in the, you know, the difference in the, the router, the difference in weather, whatever, I always bake in 0.03. On, so, the, so the length is already baked in a little bit and the height is baked in on all of it. So, um, so that should do it. Uh, you're always gonna, and, and you always have to do two bars, but if for some reason you choose not to, like this little guy, you know, I could put a little selector switch to turn that off. And then if you only want to do one bar, I think you're going to do two bars, but just do two bars and just delete one. OK, that's it. So um, if for some reason you you but this will have this kind of just has to do two bars. It's just what it's programmed for. So anyway, I think that's it. Uh, hit me up with any questions, but this should work for you. So uh, and anyone else uh, playing along at home, that's that's how you install and make icons. All right. If you have any questions, hit me up. Check, check, check.